Hello, hi, and welcome to today's Health Chat. On this channel, we talk in very simple language uh, about everything to do with the human body. So if you like this channel, then please uh, subscribe and recommend to your friends and family. We are going to talk about the function of the gastrointestinal tract or the digestive system, or to call it the gut is much easier. So I'm going to call it the gut from now. And how does this works in our body. I compare the digestive system or the gut as a composter or with a composter. Many of us have a composter in the garden. You, know, you put uh, leftover food stuff at the top end and maybe in a few months time compost comes out of the other end. Same thing happens with our gut. We put food in our mouth and within 24 hours it comes out of the other end as poo or compost. How does this happen so quickly? There are three very important things which make this happen. Number one is breaking down of the food into very, very small particles by our mouth and to some extent by our stomach. Number two, there are certain chemicals called enzymes which are produced by our stomach, by the liver, the pancreas, and also our small intestine which act on this chopped up food to break it into even finer particles or the little molecules of protein, fats and carbohydrates which are much easier to absorb in the body. And number three is the trillions of bacteria that line our gut um, and they make uh, several changes uh, to our uh, food that we have eaten and are uh, very much responsible for the smell of the uh, poo that we make and what it looks like in the end. Let's start from the very top end. Food goes into the mouth. We churned up by our teeth into small little pieces for two reasons. First of all, it helps us swallow. And number two, it helps the enzymes further down the line to act on this uh, broken up food. From the mouth, it goes into the stomach and it goes into the stomach via the esophagus or the food pipe. Uh, food pipe does not serve any other purpose other than um, uh, transporting the food from the mouth into the stomach. Stomach is a very important organ. It mushes up the food into uh, further small pieces um, like a thick paste and it also produces some enzymes which helps breaking down proteins. It also produces acid which helps killing some bad bacteria in the bowels for protecting our body. From the stomach, it goes into the small intestine. Now in the first part of the small intestine, which is the duodenum, um, enzymes come into this part of the small intestine from the liver and the pancreas and also the lining of the small intestine itself also produces some enzymes and all of these put together divide or break down our proteins, carbohydrates and fat into much finer pieces or little molecules which are easy to absorb from the lining of the small intestine. Now comes the magic part. The magic part of our gut is the small intestine. Now I compare the small intestine with a beach towel. If you want to dry yourself with a piece of cloth like I have in this photograph, plain piece of cloth, or you want to dry yourself after taking a bath with a towel, most of us will use a towel. The reason for using a towel is because it absorbs better uh, the water on our body as compared to a plain piece of cloth. And why does it do that? The reason it does that is it's got little threads sticking out of it. And each little thread acts as a separate surface. And all these thousands of threads put together and make the surface of the towel perhaps 20 times bigger than the actual size of the towel. The surface area increases, which increases the absorption of the towel as compared to a plain piece of cloth. That's why we use a towel. Same thing happens in our small intestine. So a small intestine has got these little threads sticking out of it, made out of cells, obviously, not cloth. And each this little thread 
when trillions of them are put together, the surface area of the small intestine from being 18, 20 foot long, as we know it is from my previous videos, the surface area increases by maybe 100 fold. So it is perhaps 180 um, feet long in reality if we include all these little threads that are sticking out. Also, the inside lining of the small intestine has got some folds in it. Like I've shown you on this picture, the towel being scrunched together, little folds on it, like little ridges on it. And when you iron out these ridges, the small intestine will become even longer than it actually is in our body. So these two things make the small intestine a very absorbent surface and makes it a very big surface to absorb things from. The lining cells of the small intestine are also very special, which are not present in the rest of our body because they are specialist cells or specialized cells which are, which are designed by nature to absorb our fats, our carbohydrates, our proteins, our um, uh, uh, vitamins, our uh, uh, metals like we eat, like iron, calcium, magnesium, um, etc., etc. And these are very, very specialized cells. So once the food has gone past the small intestine, all the goodies have been absorbed by the small intestine into the bloodstream. From the bloodstream, the absorbed food goes to different parts of the body, especially the liver. And we talk about it in the, in the future videos, what happens over there with the food. Now, whatever stuff is left over in the small intestine after all the goodies have been sucked in or absorbed into our body, all that gunge is left and goes into the large intestine or the colon. As we have discussed before in our previous video, large intestine is about five foot long. It does not help us absorb any nutrition. So no fats, carbohydrates, proteins are absorbed. However, it acts like a sieve and the water sieves out of it into our body gets absorbed. So by the time the food comes into the large intestine from the small intestine, it is very liquidy. By the time it comes to the end of the large intestine, which is the bottom end, which is the rectum, most of the water has been sieved out. So the stools become very hard and solid. Before coming out of the bottom end, which is the anus, the stools are stored into the rectum until we get the desire to go to the toilet. And when you get the desire to go to the toilet, the rectum contracts and the stools come out. So that is how our gut works or our digestive system works. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in a few days. Please remember to like and subscribe.